Mice Exchange had the opportunity for an exclusive interview with Mr. Graham Barnett, the Senior Exhibition Director of Reed Travel Exhibitions and responsible for IBTM World Barcelona. IBTM World is the leading global event for the meetings, incentives, conferences, events and business travel industry and takes place in Barcelona from the 17th to the 19th of December 2015. The event gathers over 15,500 meetings industry professionals for three days of focus business opportunities and networking. Hi Graham. Thank you for your time and agreeing to meet with Mice Exchange to talk about IBTM World. I have a number of questions about IBTM World, but if I could start with how has the rebranding of the IBTM to IBTM World shaped the forward focus of an already global meetings and event exhibition, and how has the interest been from exhibitors and hosted buyers in the lead up to the event? Yeah, yeah. I think um, I mean just to kind of give you the, the the understanding of why we decided to change the name of of the brand, and that's part of a, a global portfolio brand re-strategy, where over the the course of the last seven eight years the portfolio has grown quite substantially, and and over that time the events that we've either launched or acquired have had. Their brands that have followed a similar pattern, but I think we needed to sit back and look at the brand representation overall. And what two things really one, we'd never had a, a portfolio brand that was recognizable across the industry, um, and secondly, some of the original brands that we created six, seven years ago, like GIBTM and I, um, let's say AIBTM in America and CIBTM in China. Um, there was a little bit of confusion perhaps in the marketplace as to exactly what those events stood for, but also and predominantly, you know, EIBTM, people, what's the E stand for? If, if EIBTM is a global event, is a world event, then why is it called E? So we kind of thought about that um, and within the context of the global portfolio, then put together a strategy which, which aligned all of the events so that whichever event you were looking at, you could understand what its position was and what it was there to do very quickly and easily. So IBTM world, we had to change EIBTM from what people perceived as a, as a European event to a truly global show, and that's where IBTM world came from. And I think that gives the context behind not just IBTM world, but the portfolio of, of events. Uh, and we also created the IBTM events portfolio brand which is the overarching brand for all the events that sit under that portfolio now so we've got a very clear brand structure with the IBT events portfolio brand and then the sub brands underneath that with IBTM world being the global brand amongst the portfolio of, of regional events. Has the rebranding made any fundamental changes to the exhibition format for meeting planners and suppliers? Um, what we were very keen to ensure was that for 99.9% .9 of, of our, our, our event, the, the show remains pretty much the same. Um, the, the name has changed, but pretty much that's it. Um, and what we were very keen to ensure was that the, the, the community that we serve, the global community that we serve, um, who have trusted and believed in the EIBTM brand for you know, 20 odd years now, uh, that was still going to exist. It was more of a name change than fundamentally anything underneath that. So to answer the question in terms of ha has the event changed in any way because of the name change, the answer um, is no. Um, we, have, we have seen quite a few people obviously struggle with getting their head around the name change. Um, and externally and internally, we have a little fine system where people have to put in 50 euros internally every time we, we say EIBTM now rather than IBTM World. And, but it's quite surprising, actually, how quickly the, the name changes has, has caught on. Um, and most of our, most of our um, clients, whether they're on the planner side or the supplier side, have very quickly got their head around IBTM World as the, as the new title. So it hasn't made any fundamental changes, really, to... Um, to the event and, and, and you wouldn't expect to see too many changes in Barcelona this year apart from 
um, as I said, the, the positioning and the brand structure and the presentation of those brands around the event. Graeme, I understand that IBTM World has a uh, business theme of connections being business. What's the management team doing to maintain that focus? I think if you, if you look at our, our, all of our um, brand equity and the, the, the phrase connections mean everything is, is our, our strap line really and, and that's not just for IBTM World but it, it's across all of the events and, and you know without connections you can't create face-to-face -face engagement, you can't create business meetings, you can't create appointments and you can't create um, profitable business um, meetings. So. We, we absolutely stand by that and we have to do everything we can, whether it's through delivering, you know, 4,000 hosted buyers to Barcelona. It's about delivering the right buyers, for the right exhibitors, relevant, relevant meetings, relevant appointments. Um, everything we do is about connecting people who have got a mutual interest in, in meeting each other. Um, so we, do, we will be continually focusing on how we connect people, whether it's through social media, whether it's through apps, whether it's through face-to-face -face engagement on the, on the show floor, whether it's through uh, matchmaking um, tools, et cetera. Everything's all about those connections because without that, you know, our, our show really um, hasn't got a place, um, place in the marketplace. So it's all about connections. Profitable business connections, should I say. The meetings and event industry continues to see the effects of globalisation and fluctuating economics. How does IBTM World assist the way associations, independent and corporate event planners handle these changes? Well, I think um, we've, we've looked at the programmes that we've delivered for both the association and corporate meeting planners over the last um, few years on, on IBTM World particularly and also looked at, at programs um, for those two particular segments um, around around the exhibition industry per se and, and I think what we've seen is that research has told us that certainly association meeting planners want more flexibility, they want their opportunity to spend more time on the exhibition floor, um, not necessarily corralled around a a bespoke program that leads them from education to appointments on the floor to networking um, and it's it's all very structured and rigid and we undertook a, a focus group last year um, to really try and dig a bit deeper into what the needs of the association meeting planner was and the result of that was to launch a new uh, program dedicated for association meeting planners called my association my club which is all about having the flexibility understanding what their needs were in terms of time, in terms of was it what was the most important aspect of the show for them, was it networking, was it sourcing new products on the show floor, meeting existing clients, um, but also having the ability to interact with each other in a formal and informal ways. So one of the things that we, we created was um, a dedicated hub hotel in Barcelona. So previously, um, the number of association buyers that we bought as part of, of the program were dotted around Barcelona with various um, groups that were, were coming into the event and we decided to bring them together in one hotel which was um, enabled them uh, to share you know, challenges, um, expertise, insight more, more easily in being in the one hotel. So that worked really well. We created a small hub on the exhibition floor just for association meeting planners. Um, so that, that again worked, works exceptionally well and, and the feedback from that was that they really enjoyed the ability to have more flexibility to pick their own education program, pick their own networking events that they wanted to attend. So the flexibility was something that they really enjoyed. So we took that and that will be a running again this year. Um, but on the basis of those learnings we've, we've done a similar exercise for the corporate meeting planner and only two weeks ago in London we had a, a focus group with a dozen corporate meeting planners from the UK and, and uh, mainland Europe to really get inside what is it that they want from an exhibition, not just now this year, but maybe you know well into the future. And again, it was more about flexibility. Um, time is obviously critical uh, for meeting planners wherever they are in the world now and to come to Barcelona for two, maybe three days. They want to be more in charge with their 
their program, build a program that suits their needs. So we're creating an, a new proposition for the corporate meeting planner this year. So we normally um, bring in 600 or so meeting planners from the world around the, the corporate meeting planning world, and, and they will have a program m more dedicated to them this year with with that element of flexibility. So we're we're certainly recognising the need for changing the offer for those two constituent um, communities and so far the feedback that we had from last year and, and the focus group that we've had this year has been very encouraging. Graham, how much will IBTM will bring the lessons learned from other IBTM exhibitions such as the reactions of buyers and exhibitors to the exhibitor pod experience. Will IBTM World keep its current mixed showcase format, or is there a changing trend to the way exhibitors want to present themselves? Yeah. Yeah, you know, we, we could... Yeah, we're, continue, we're continually learning about what our customers want, and, you know, we, we can't sit back and think that the the events that we have have a divine right to exist for you know for 20 or 30 years without without change so the you know the the pod style events that that you've referring to um, and the tabletop events are very much about addressing the needs of the customer the one-to-one -one appointments you know very important for um, specific markets where we where we don't feel that you know a large-scale um, trade exhibition format like IBTM world is appropriate um, having said that, I think the real key to whatever event style that we put on is is the relevance of of um, those appointments, those business meetings. Um, we're we're looking at you know matchmaking as a as a as a key driver now for um, how we bring buyers and sellers together because ultimately that's what our customers are interested in. It's it's relevant appointments, making full use of the value of their time uh, and their investment in in the shows. And again, coming back to our corporate meeting plans this year, we're trialling something completely different and new, um, based on uh, matchmaking. So the 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 appointment schedule process that we've adopted over the last um, a dozen so years that um, I, EIBTM has been in Barcelona has 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 remained pretty much the same. Um, and now it's time for a bit of a change and a bit of a fresh look at how we can create recommendations based on the information that our exhibitors are providing, that our exhibitors sorry, and our hosted buyers are providing to create matches that are, are totally unique and bespoke to that individual. So that's something that we're, we're piloting as part of a global read uh, exhibitions initiative this year. So we're looking forward to seeing the results of that. So um, I guess the learnings that, that we can take from... Um, the changes that we've made for some of our events this year is that, you know, we've got to be absolutely committed to ensuring that the value that we give both both to our exhibitors and uh, our buyers, and also to some extent our trade visitors, is that they're there to do business. They want relevant, high quality meeting business meetings and appointments that lead to profitable business connections in the future. And um, you know that that remains steadfast in our in our goals to provide those for each and every customer that we have attending our events. The internet has forever changed the way we communicate and do business these days. Digital technology and social media is changing the way that the mice industry communicates and does business even between buyers and suppliers. How is IBTM World adapting to or meeting the challenge of how digital marketing uh, contributes to event planning internationally? And how is the event evolving to meet the networking and business needs of attendees? Um, I think certainly the way that the show pre presents itself, you know, we can't, we just can't put up a website and expect people to um, just to use the website um, as a source of information. And, and what we're aiming to do is connect to our industry, our global marketplace, not just through a website, but you know, digital channels, digital communications, social media, um, you look at all the content that we deliver on the show floor year after year. Well. One of the things that we've done over the last um, four weeks actually is launch a new um, web portal, which is IBTM Inspire, which aggregates all of the great content that we pr produce, not just at IBTM World, but at the events around the world, to provide an information source for uh, the global events community to dip in and dip out of. 
Um, so, you know, the, the hunger for information, we're, we're trying to bring all that great rich content together and, and put that in one place. Social media is, is you know, hugely important now in, in terms of us reaching our customers, reaching new customers and giving them also a platform to share information with, with that community. Um, so that, that's kind of, if you look at what goes on around the show, when, you, when you're talking about, you know, in, in the event, um, of course, we deliver 15, over 15,000 individuals as part of that global community to Barcelona, but there's an awful lot of individuals that can't make it to Barcelona for one reason or another. So things like webcasting, education content, webcasting, news, profiles, interviews from, from the exhibition floor, again, is, is pushing out that, that kind of the feel about what's going on in the exhibition um, for those that are unable to come to Barcelona. Um, so technology is certainly shifting the way that we communicate um, with our audience and also is, is reflecting in some of the, the things that we do and the features that we have around the show. Um, for example, our uh, education program this year, whilst it's going to be web streamed and webcast um, via, the, via the internet, the way that we are f formulating and creating an environment for education is changing. So we're very, very much aware that, you know, people's needs are changing in terms of how they learn and what they want to achieve out of education. So we're, we're the, the event is very much being shaped now by the drivers externally, uh, not just in terms of technology, but how we as human beings want to interact and, you know, education that the time, people have to spend on absorbing education is getting shorter and shorter so that's reflected in the program it's reflected in the, the way that the, the the sessions are designed the furniture the lighting the smell can you believe it the senses it's stimulating those senses so you know the event is going to continually evolve around the way we as human beings are acting the way we learn um, the way we want to interact face to face um, so yeah, you know, our, our event is very much being shaped and evolved um, as things evolved in generally um, around us. While face-to-face -face and networking remains an important part of marketing and the communication of ideas, can IBTM World take an educational and resource role that extends its value well past the actual annual event and meet the need for networking, staying in touch and ideas exchange where both planners and suppliers can extend the IBTM world experience. Yeah, and I think, yeah, hopefully that will be the case. And, and as I mentioned earlier, the launch of our new um, website, which is our web portal, which is IBTM Inspire, hopes to pull all of that rich content that we deliver in China, Arabia, America, India, Mexico, all of that under... In, in one easy accessible um, portal so that wherever you are in the world, you know, we have 80 odd sessions that we run at IBTM World, for example, across the different um, industry sectors, um, different geographies, different themes. So pooling all that together, adding into that all the research that we have access to, the insight that we can share through things like our IBTM Trends Report and the studies that are published to support our events globally. All that can sit now in, in one, one um, portal. So, yeah, we're aiming to be able to provide a, a global hub, if you like, of, of rich uh, insight, intelligence and content that, um, that meeting professionals can access uh, 365. The popular IBTM World uh, Knowledge Programme provides a learning forum for both buyers and exhibitors. Are there any further innovations that make these popular sessions a, a must-see or do for exhibition attendees? Uh, as the event industry needs creative thinkers to literally think outside the box to maintain their presence in the marketplace. So how does IBTM yeah. World promote this creative growth for exhibitors and event organisers? And that, that's really important because, you know, our, our, our paying customers, our, our exhibitors, they, they are the ones that are paying to entertain 4,000 hosted buyers. So the balance between providing um, education sessions for our, our meeting planners com community, um, the balance between that and also enabling to spend time on the exhibition floor is, is um, one that we're very, very well aware of on both sides. And, and our education program certainly is evolving and, and will evolve this year 
Um, one of the key changes is that all of our exhibition content now will be on the exhibition floor rather than on a conference suite um, on one floor above. And I think that that has been driven by demand really, customer demand from the exhibitor side and from the planner side that they, it's all about time really. Um, planners have only got so much time and we don't want to waste their time walking up and down flights of stairs to get from one room to another. So it's all coming down on the exhibition floor. We're working with um, a really creative partner to create uh, a knowledge village, um, which is providing uh, the correct, the right environments, you know, interesting environments at which people can learn rather than just sitting in a conference room, um, you know, a standard conference room with four blank walls and a projector screen. It, it's moving away from that. And so the design element of that learning experience is really important. The themes that we're looking at this year are, are basically there's, there's, a, there's six, six key headings um, for our themes and the programs this year, which range from, you know, I, I've been in this industry now for nearly 20 years. And one of the things that I really, I get inspired by is listening to people from outside our industry, people that are not necessarily connected with the meetings industry, but have got an awful lot of insight and, um, and views to share, which we can learn from. So, you know, my, my view is that the more external influences that we can bring um, to our industry, um, and I, I include myself as a meeting professional in, in the industry. You know, that, that's the sort of thing I'm looking looking to learn from. So it's about bringing fresh people into the uh, to program to to share their views, thoughts, and insight. Um, and it's about you know the key themes this year are about inspiration from outside. So whether that's thought leaders, economists, motivational speakers, um, industry trends, learning from those people on the exhibition floor, but also bringing that content alive um, via via the web. Um, le leading lights from the industry, you know, there's some fantastic people with huge amounts of knowledge in this industry that we want to um, give the forum and the platform to, to, to again, share their, their knowledge, their insight, their skills. Um, people that have got, you know, the, the, the experience of running some of the biggest events on the planet, giving them the opportunity to share their knowledge and experience. And also, um, we've, we've got a thing called learning from the sandpit, which on the face of what, what on earth is all that about? But it's also, also about, you know, about how people are innovating events these days. Um, not re necessarily related to the biggest is the best, but it's also about how are people innovating, you know, from, from scratch, how are people doing things that, that are completely different and well and truly outside the realms of, of what we've seen in the past. Um, so there's a whole rich vein of, of themes going on, all on all in the exhibition floor in, in um, a single knowledge village, which will be able to um, accommodate sessions from 150 down to small niche um, sessions from 50 to 25. Um, so again, it's about the, the environment, it's about the content being structured to, to deliver the right content to the right set of individuals in, in, in the right way. And, and, you know, we must never forget that attendees have a choice. You know, they don't have to attend any education. They don't have to sit in, in sessions. Um, so it's about us creating unique content that inspires and motivates people to really want to sit and listen and learn um, to help shape their own professional careers um, or hope, help shape their, their own personal development. Um, so education is is very much evolving for us, um, and hopefully you'll see some some really interesting changes on the show floor this year. How does IBTM World meet the demand of exhibitors for more interactive spaces to meet and attract attendees, either through experiential or collaborative spaces, online involvement, etc.? And is this bringing a change to the floor space of yep. the exhibition? I think the one thing that I've seen is that um, exhibitors are looking for different ways, different platforms to get their marketing communication messages across, whether that's, you know, the events like IBTM World have always, all, always had an opportunity to extend the brand via sponsorship opportunities or advertising, etc. But I think more and more we're seeing exhibitors coming to us to say, okay, we'd like to get in front of a specific segment of the market, whether it's association or corporate meeting planners, how can you help us achieve that um, either before the show, during the show or after the show, whether it's um, in breakfasts or whether it's in focus sessions or whether it's dinners. There's far more 
going on around the exhibition now than than there ever has been before. So um, the demand for us to be able to deliver, you know, th those crucial relevant business appointments is absolutely increasing, and it's up to us as an organizer to try and find unique and innovative innovative ways to bring those those two groups together whether it's actually within the, the confines of the exhibition venue, um, whether it's during the show or after the show, before the show even, or, or in and around the city of Barcelona. You know, they're the sort of things that our, our exhibitors are wanting to, to, to discover more and more these days. Graham, we see many industries going through what can only be termed as disruptors in the way that business is being done. For instance, the Uber or Airbnb experience. Um, do you see any potential disruptors on the horizon for the event industry? Really difficult question um, to, to put an answer to, but I'll try in, in the best way that I can. You know, 10, 15 years ago when the internet all of a sudden hit us as, um, as individuals, the face-to-face the, the -face engagement, the exhibition was going to be a dying breed, you know. Um, and as an organization, read exhibitions globally, you know, we, we go from strength to strength. So I guess that was, that was a, a, a major industry disruptor that, that came along all, that, all those years ago. And we're still here. Um, we're still doing um, what we believe is a, is a, is a great job for, for our customers, you know, connecting people from around the world. Um, I think that the challenge, I wouldn't say necessarily it's a disruptor, but I think it's something that we spend a lot of time talking about is you know the, the generation the millennial generation i've got i've got two children of, of 21 and almost 23 and you know you talk to them about going to a, an exhibition as a trade show and they're they don't look at it in the same way as you know i used to when i was that age or i still do so how do we ensure that our events whether it's a trade exhibition or or an experiential event are relevant and provide a a unique platform and opportunity to to do what the people of that generation need. So you know they're they're social social media aware, hugely social media aware. Everything is instant. Everything is quick. Um, they want it. They want it now. So does the do the event does the events industry does it need to change to to deliver for the for that generation um you know, as i said we spend quite a lot of time on that our education program for example is starting to shape uh be shaped by the attention span of of younger people um i think gone are the days where people are, are really willing to sit for an hour listening to somebody talk off a powerpoint slide deck you know those those days are kind of very very numbered now um so i think that that for me is is the thing that is probably going to change the way the events industry shapes itself over the next um certainly over the next uh five to ten years is how do we ensure that live events whether they're trade shows whether they're conferences how do they capture the imagination and deliver for um uh, a set of a new a new generation of people that perhaps don't look at, uh, at events in the way that that we used to Graham, you've watched the meetings and event industry evolve over a number of years by being involved with uh, uh, EIBTM and now IBTM World. Do you see, or what evidence do you see of the meeting industry moving away from traditional uh, classroom environments into hybrid meeting formats? And how does IBTM yeah. World support planners in meeting the demand for experiential meetings using collaborative spaces, online involvement, etc. Exactly. And, you know, it was interesting. Um, one of, one of um, the hotel chains now is, 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 is making um, hologram technology available in its, um, in its flagship uh, property in Madrid. And you look at that and you think, OK, well, how, how far can technology go to satisfy the needs of meeting planners? But I think there's technology but there's also the softer side of, of what people want and experience and our expectations as as meeting professionals are are getting higher and higher every year the level of service that we require um, uh, the speed at which uh, we get that service is is getting shorter uh, I, I certainly think that the quality of service provision whether it's the technology or whether it's front of house is is getting 
um, more critical as, as the day, every day goes on. So, you know, the supply chain has got a real challenge on its hands to meet the ever-changing need. And, and also, you know, the, the cost factor as well comes in over the course of the last, well, half dozen years since 2008, eight nine, the economic um, crash, you know, I think as consumers, we've all expected things to become cheaper. You know, how long can that carry on for? How long, how long do suppliers you know, I guess, have to suffer lower margins because of that. And there, there, there has to come a time where um, meeting planners, although budgets are probably on the whole still relatively flat, if not growing by one or two percent a year, they're still wanting to, 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 to have the best value that they possibly can, which is a challenge in many cases for suppliers. Um, so it's, it's, an, it's an interesting scenario right now. Graeme, do you have any sneak preview of changes or incentives that are coming to IBTM World for 2015? Um, well, I think I wouldn't say that there's one big surprise, but there's going to be some changes that people will hopefully notice uh, when they when they come over to Barcelona. Um, one thing that I can give you a sneak preview about is our, our tech, tech Watch Awards, our technology awards, which have been incredibly successful over the last nine years. Um, we're slightly reshaping that um, to include innovation. Um, we normally get 60 uh, submissions for our Tech Watch Awards every year, and most of those are obviously technology product and service related, but more and more we're seeing innovation come into play from areas outside of technology. So we're st we're, we will be looking at how can we incorporate innovation per se, not just technology, but in, in, in the wider um, field and, and celebrate and recognize what, what companies are doing in the, in the world of innovation. So you can look, certainly look out for that. Um, you can look out for a new, a new venue for our meetings leadership summit. Um, that was something that we created last year on the Monday evening before the show opens to bring 200 of the, the industry's leading um, executives into a, a networking and insight sharing education format. Um, we've got a brand new venue for that, which is quite exciting, which I can't share with you now, but it's a really exciting venue. So there's there's lots of things that are going going on that will will certainly be noticed when when people come to Barcelona um, so I can't necessarily give you a hundred percent scoop on anything just yet but there's a few things that we're going to be announcing in the next probably in the next four to five weeks that, that will be quite interesting for the show. During EIBTM 2014 we saw a much larger representation of Spanish uh, event planners and uh, service providers and with the recent improvements of the Spanish economy providing new opportunities both locally and internationally. How have Spanish event organisers responded to their inclusion in the IBTM World Hosted Buyers Program? You know, last year we started to see the, um, the, the growth, the return to growth, if you like, of um, attendees from the Spanish domestic market into IBTM World. And, and of course, IBTM World is is Spain's leading annual um, meetings event as well as as well as being you know, a global event. Um, we had a, a, a significant increase in the number of meeting planners coming from Spain last year. Um, as we all have seen and heard, the Spanish economy economy is gaining momentum now. Um, and what my anticipation is that we will see another increase um, from the Spanish domestic meeting planner community this year. Um, which is good news for for all of our exhibitors, of course, as well as as meeting planners from Spain look to not just um, spread their their hopefully increasing budgets uh, across Europe, but also internationally as well. And um, you know, I, I'm I'm really hoping that that's going to to see that they're going to deliver a really strong um, impact on the event again this year. So we saw it last year, and I think we'll see an increase uh, and for further momentum in that for for 2015. Graeme, you've been involved with EIBTM and now IBTM World uh, for many years. Uh, how, is the excitement still there and do you still have the same enthusiasm for the events? And are you fired up, ready to go for uh, IBTM World 2015? 
You betcha. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it, it's, um, it's kind of strange when, you know, you finish one event and my, 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 I, I like to decombust for two days in Barcelona just to kind of have some time on my own and, and think, okay, what can we do better? What can we do to help our customers achieve their business goals the following year? So my planning for the show starts literally um, the, the day our, our event closes. Um, and then you go through the planning phase, the strategic planning phase, um, and then it's implementation phase. And, um, you know, I, I think it, it, every, every year without fail, you know, you look to try and improve on what, what, what we deliver for our customers. Um, and every year we come up with something slightly different, tweaking this or, or changing that and evolving, evolving things. And, you know, as I said earlier, no event has got the divine right to, to, to exist forever. Uh, we have to change with our, with our market, markets, the demands of our customers. And, and I think that's the exciting thing for me is, is the anticipation of, you know, the things that we've put into practice, all the hard work that the team have done over the course of 12 months is seeing that come to fruition um, on the day the show opens and the three days of the show and, um, and hearing the feedback. And then, and then you start again. So, you know, I, I think I'm probably as excited um, as anybody in the team, when I go on site, I, I absolutely love it. I can't wait to get on site. And um, although I don't wish time away, you know, we've got six months, five months now till the 2015 event, uh, and uh, and the excitement will only only sort of gather momentum, certainly for me and the team over the next few months.